be in my mouth. My soul shall make boast of the Lord. The Lord is good, isn't he? I'm asking you. The Lord is good, isn't he? <laughs> Amen. It is, we are honored today to be in your presence. I have felt the pre presence of the Lord. The Lord is in us. And, and we are just given the Holy Spirit here today. And I thank God for being here with our son and daughter-in-law and our grandbaby and, and you, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. Amen. They are, they, we are one. We are one in the Spirit. We are one. I love you guys, and it's a blessing to be here. Pray for us in New Jersey. We, by, by we pastor uh, Beulah Gospel Tabernacle in Bayonne, New Jersey, and Holy Tabernacle in Elizabeth, New Jersey. So we need your prayers. Amen. Thank you very much for this space. Amen. We have a treat all the way from, all the way from, far away, third dimension, third dimension. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with such gifted and talented people in this body. This is a wealth, this is a wealth body right here. We're so rich, so many gifts, talents, so many fathers and mothers in the kingdom here here not just in this second service but also the first service and those that you know just we're blessed every joint supplies and we are fitly joined together all of us here all of us here so we're going to be blessed today by the father's heart through virginia derrickson I got it. <laughs> Woo. Okay. All righty. I'm in the living room again. Yes. Wow. Okay. Um, I want to read a portion of scripture before I get started. Um, Isaiah chapter 61. I'm going to read the first seven verses. Alrighty. Okay, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will raise up the former devastations, and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers will stand and pasture your flocks and foreigners will be your farmers and your vine dressers. But you will be called the priests of the Lord. You will, be spoken as, you will be spoken of as ministers of our God. You will eat the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will be given a double portion. And instead of humiliation, you, they will shout for joy over their portion. Therefore, they will possess a double portion portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. Okay. <clears throat> All righty. I'm going to be talking to you guys today about walking in the peace of God. Um, in the first service, I gave a short introduction of, of me and um, 
So I'm going to give another one. Um, for those that don't know me, I am Virginia Derrickson, and I am the happy wife of Michael, <laughs> just sitting right over there, for uh, like 30, almost 32 years. So, um, but anyway, um, what I wanted to um, give them an introduction was that I grew up as, it's really a miracle that I'm standing here because growing up, I had a spirit of fear for like a long time. And it wasn't until I actually came here to be in this body, in this living room, with this community of believers, that that fear was actually broken off of me. Didn't realize I carried a spirit of fear, but it was definitely there. So, but it's gone now. Amen. Um, I have freedom and liberty. Amen. <laughs> so it's gone. Um, then also, um, what else do you need to know about me? Um, I love the Lord and, um, he is my life. I mean, without him, there's just, um, there's nothing, you know? So then also my mission statement, my mission in life, and we should all have a mission statement yes. so that we know where we're going so we know when we've got there. So yes. we know how far more we have to go or whatever it is God wants to do with us. Yes. But my mission in life is to see the love of the Father manifested within families, bridging any generational gap. Psalm 145 and 4 declares that one generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. And on yesterday, I was privileged to be at a homegoing service for one of my oldest cousins. She was 81. She would have been 82 in December. And to see the family that was there, the people, it was over 300 people there at this funeral, this homegoing. It was just awesome. It was just awesome. And it was just really a testament to her life um, for, I mean, all the people that showed up and the power of God was just there in the service and people were being ministered to. It was, it was just totally awesome. It was totally just, yes. it was totally awesome. So um, never give up on your family. Amen. Never, never, never. Because God's got a plan and purpose for all of us. Yes. And he wants us to fulfill our plans and our purposes. Steve? Yeah. He wants us to do that. Yes. So, um, but to lead into what I want to speak about with the peace, is um, last, well, this past April, my sister had passed away. And, and I'll admit it it, 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 it took its toll. It just, it just, it wiped me, it wiped me out. But, um, but I knew God was there. I knew he, he was there. He was working with me. He was ministering to me. He, he was all that. And I, and I trust him. But still, there were questions, you know as to why he would allow me to see these th certain things, you know. But through all this happening when she had passed away, my question was on the day that she passed away, I was having a conversation with her daughter, and we had chose right before, it was probably maybe 10 minutes before she passed, her daughter and I were having this conversation, and we decided to not look at what we were actually seeing, but to actually see what God was doing through all of it. And that totally changed our whole outlook on, on everything. So our question was, okay, God, what are you doing? That was it. So I really didn't get, because my mind was just kind of messed up, but I really didn't get an answer right then. But one Sunday sitting in service, sitting in worship, God told me, he said, there is a peace that passes all understanding. Yes. And I was like, that's my answer. I want that peace that passes all understanding. That's what I want. So I believe that he has given me that peace that passes all understanding, and I want to give it to you. I want you to have it, because we all need it. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually read, um, actually in January of this year, then you'll know why this thing kind of wiped me out. In January of this year, one of my best friends slash cousin passed away, and she had had in her papers and she had written up all these things that she wanted me to eulogize her. I'm like, okay. So, and I did, but
But um, one thing that came out of the, uh, the eulogy was because, you know, I was like, God, what do, you, what do you want me to say? You know, and I really did not get a message, anything, until about an hour when it was time for me to walk out the door to get to the place. So I was like, okay, God, this, this is coming from you because I don't have anything. So, um, so when I got there, I was listening to what everybody was saying, and I trusted them. I knew he was going to give me something because they wouldn't leave me hanging. But I was like, okay, well, what do you want me to say? So with everything that was said, every song that was sung, there were messages being imparted in me. And I'm going to read um, actually a conversation that my cousin had actually had with her niece probably a couple of days before she actually passed. And then you'll understand why this actually would lead me into the peace Amen. part of this. But the conversation, and she entitled it Blue. It says, I wonder if anyone knew. Did you know I felt alone? No one understood me, and I could not understand why. I prayed and prayed as my mama had taught me to. I, had always, I was always just a little sensitive, a little bit black and a little blue. And why I tried so hard to pray and to see the light, I could only see darkness and remained only always in the spotlight. So I decided to dig a deep hole to hide away the pain. No more dark, dark nights, no more powder blue days. Then one day, I lost one of the three things I lived for. The hole I had built was no longer home. It was a sore. So I found another way to drown, to numb, to burn, even smoke the pain away. Here comes another low moment, another silent blue day. I know, you, I know you know my secret, what I do to keep, to hold, what I do to hold and keep the demons at bay. And then you judge me, you tease me, and you call me out of my name. So many stakes in my soul, so much pain in my heart. Watch me fall down, watch me fall apart. Some years have gone by now, same story, different day. I look in the mirror, I really don't have much to say. I know God will call me home soon. He no longer wants me to suffer. I walk amongst the living, ready to be rediscovered. I know my day is soon to come. With no more daughter, no more mother, no more brother, I am the only one. I hope my presence has changed someone's life. For when I die, there will be no more shame, no more blue, no more life. My heart is mighty heavy now, my body so very weak. Dear God, please forgive me. I scream with my last breath. Please show me light. I smile. I love you all. Thank you, Jesus. Good night. And with this, we need to realize there are people that are walking around every day with these things in their heart. There are people walking around every day thinking that people don't care. And those are the people that we're called to reach. Yes. Those are the people that are just looking for a kind word from us. They're waiting for us to come and to embrace them, to let them know that they matter. I, I hadn't seen my um, cousin for a while. I didn't know she was going through all of this. If I had known, well, I can't say that now because, you know, it's over, but if I had known, she would not have been like this, you know. Um, so I'm saying that to say this. Value the gifts that God has placed within you. We all have gifts to reach any person that needs to be reached. There are people that God will place in your path and only your path because you're the only one that can reach that person. You know, so we, we need to, to recognize and honor the gifts that God has placed within us. So on today, I honor and I receive the gift that God has placed within me, that gift of peace. It took me a long while to be able to accept the gift of peace. He's, he's given it to me, and I know you guys probably have seen so much, so many things in me, but until I actually saw it. It don't matter. You can tell me all day long what you see, but until I accept it, until I accept and open the gift, it doesn't matter. So today, I'm telling you, I receive the gift 
that God has given me, and I honor that gift, and I cherish that gift of peace. And I'm going to release that unto you today. Amen. So when God told me that there was a peace that passes all understanding, I was sitting back there somewhere, and I literally, my body just jumped. It was like, okay, there's, there's, there's something to this. And I remember going to Pastor Muncie, and I remember telling him, you know, I, I got to talk about peace. I, I, I got to do this because there's something that God has placed within me, and it needs to be birthed, like, now. So, of course, he gave me a date, and then he kind of forgot because he processes stuff. He's a processor. And then he comes to me later and said, did I, did I promise you something? And I was like, yeah, you, you did. So, But anyway, so here I am. And um, when we think about peace, you know, we can all form our own definitions. I'm sure if I went through the room, everyone would have their own definition of what peace is, you know. But when I wanted to know, and I did go to all these different sources to find out what peace was, and God said, no, that's not it. He said to go to the source, the source of peace, and that's God. So, of course, I sozoed myself because... That's the way I'm going to find out what peace is. So I just said, Father God, what is peace? And God told me, he said, I am peace. Know me and bask in my love. The closer you draw to me, the more of my peace you can enjoy. Choose to receive my love and pass it on to others. So I accepted that challenge. I'm going to pass it on. I'm going to pass on his love. I'm going to pass on his joy and his laughter and his peace and everything that he's placed within me. Yes. God created us in his image and his likeness. We have the ability to grow and to develop and to come into being. God looked out across eternity and he saw you and I. He saw everything that he would create around you. He saw the specific need on this earth that he would make you to meet. So in the beginning, he already knew when Sister Jenny's born, even before she's born, I already have a need for her to meet. Yes. He already knew that. So he saw the full traits and the abilities that you need in order to complete his purpose for your life. I shared in the first service about a vision that I'd had on one of my trips to heaven about an incubator. The incubator was filled with babies, just babies everywhere. And Father God was placing in those babies everything those babies would need to make it in this world. The babies were, I mean, being protected, cared for by God. And um, he was just feeding them, just feeding them. And then when those babies were full of what he wanted to be in them, he would pick one out and he decided, okay, it's time for you to be born. He placed the baby in the mother's womb. He picked out the perfect parents, placed the baby in the womb. The mother nurtured the baby. The baby's born. So here's all these gifts, abilities. Here's everything that need to be nurtured. Those are things that um, are in us. So the plans and purposes of God are not forgotten. They are not forgotten. Whatever he placed within you, it's there to be fulfilled. And he wants you to know that. He has a plan and purpose for every one of us in here. We just need to seek it out. Seek it out. And you will be so much freer and happier <laughs> when you seek it out. Our responsibility is to turn our hearts toward God. Peace centers on relationship. I also shared in the first service about how growing up, I was always the one that, that, that taught Sunday school and sang in the choir and did everything in the church. And people thought, oh, she's just a good girl and she's, she's, she's loving the Lord and following the Lord. And I was doing all that. But I had never said a sinner's prayer until I was 18. But think of all the, all the Sunday school classes that I taught before I turned 18, you know. And... But I was doing it because it was something that I enjoyed doing. It was something I, I enjoyed um, the word of God. I just enjoy it. So it was easy for me to teach. But I didn't have a relationship. But once I got the relationship with God, everything 
shifted. Everything changed. Yeah, yeah. Because then the words started to actually take root. Before they weren't taking root. I could, I could come up with a sermon. I could come up with a teaching. Spit it out till you be done with it. But it wasn't here. It was not here. But then when everything started to get here, then the freedom started to come. So God yearns to have intimacy with us, to have us be at peace with him. God offers you the joy of his presence that comes from partnering with him. God says he is creating an atmosphere for his people to walk in, and you're going to meet him there. God says, go to that place that I have created, that you and I have created together to celebrate victories, triumphs, and levels, greater levels of intimacy. I am your peace, and I am your life source. That's your message from God today, that he is your peace and he is your life source. We're to go to that place. Bill Johnson talks about us creating a history with God. We need to create a history with God so that when things come up, it doesn't make us stumble and fall. We run to him. We run to that place. And, and, and everything that he's imparted in us, all the scriptures, all those different things that he's given you five years ago and now something comes up and that thing just that scripture covers you. The word of God covers you. But have that history with God. God wants a history with us. Those places that he meets us. So what does peace look like? This is still part of my sozo. What does peace look like? So I saw the nutshell. And I was like, okay, God, what is this nutshell? Anyone that's been through a sozo knows that God will give you pictures of anything. <laughs> And you need to ask him what it means. But he showed me a nutshell. And I cracked it open because I wanted to see what was on the inside. I saw a vine, and the vine was moving up. It was just moving up. And I heard the words, um, I'm the vine, and you are the branches. So I said, OK, God, what does that mean? He said, you're strong, you're nourished, you're bright green. You are full of growth and you are alive. He said, you are plentiful. Then um, I am one with Jesus. Jesus said, I created you full of life and adventure. Experience life. So I said, how do I experience life? And he said, to come out of your shell. So I am out of my shell. <laughs> had to and then I found a quote in a little book and it said and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom so there's a risk in this and there's, there's a vulnerability that, that, that comes with this there's a transparency that comes with it but you need that that's where the trust comes in don't, don't be afraid to be transparent don't be afraid to um, let other people know that, that you have a need. Yes. Um, I remember when I first came here, I'm going to pick on some, I got a little bit of time, I'm going to pick on some people because, I mean, because these people really, really just um, touch my life. I'm not going to do everybody because I might leave somebody out. But, but John, when I first came here, don't look at me like that. When I first came here, um, I, was, I was in a shell. I was in my shell. But, and you know, I was afraid to really worship and to do things because I was, had been hurt by the church. I was afraid of all that stuff. But I can remember some situations that happened in my life. And I can remember John coming, because I missed a Sunday at church. It was in 2008. I remember <laughs> I missed a Sunday in church. And I remember you coming up to me, because I think I had to go to the hospital or something. But you came up to me and you told me that if something ever happened that I was to tell you guys, I said, Peace, you said, because we're family. That totally changed me. It totally wrecked me. Didn't know I was wrecked because I didn't know what it meant to be wrecked at the time, but I knew something was different. You told me because we're family. You told me that. That's why we're family. Okay? Yeah. So, so you never know what you say, and then Jenny, she come up to me. We got the same name, so we're sisters. Yeah. <laughs> we're sisters. You know, so you never know what you say. You never know how it changes somebody. It, it totally changed me. It, it, it just did. Um, so anyway, so Graham Cook says, <laughs> so Graham Cook says, when you're at peace, you're not, you're no longer in your own strength. You stop trying to do things on your own, in your own efforts. 
You are waiting, you're watching, you're listening, and you are preparing to do whatever it is that God tells you to do. That's when you're at peace because you know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But then Bill Johnson said that there's wisdom that goes along with carrying this peace. So you have to be wise in carrying this peace. You always have to be listening to what God is saying. So are you willing to change your perspective of how you choose to perceive, interpret, and process information according to God's word? Are you willing to live in the secret place? The secret place is where you choose to go to meet with God. When you choose to live there and hide under his shadow, staying in constant communion with him, you can remain peaceful even when circumstances may not be. You will remain peaceful. We're to develop a lifestyle of making the Lord our refuge. In the Message Bible in Psalm 46, verse 1, it says, God is a safe place to hide, ready to help when we need him. He's ready to help, but we have to realize that he is our refuge. We have to go to him so that he can hide us. You who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. Say this, God, you're my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. That's Psalm 91 and 1 in the Message Bible. So what is the right perspective that we're to have? We're to see life as an adventure that is exciting and worth living rather than a struggle, which is what my cousin had went through. She saw it as a struggle. But life is to be exciting and worth living. When I had my 50th birthday in July, I said, I'm going to celebrate all of July, and I'm going to keep celebrating because, not just because I'm 50, but because Life, I'm, this is worth living here. You know, yes, it's exciting. Yes, yes. So, and we're to see life as a wonderful opportunity to encounter other people and share the love of God with them. It's a good thing to wake up in the morning and just search out, say, okay, God, who do you have that's going to be in my path today? Yes. You know, who, who am I going to be able to share your love with? We have to, to, to have that, that mindset. Then when people come, we're, we're ready. We're ready because they're go- they're going to come and they- they're already here actually. Already here. They just we just need to seek them out. We need to see life as unfolding according to God's plan. That's why it's important for us to know what God's plan is for us. And do you live with an, with an anticipation for what God is doing? Because God's always up to something. He's always doing something, but we need to get with Him to see exactly what it is that He's doing. Because he's doing something, and you're part of what he's doing. So we really need to, um, to do that. Um, and one other thing I want to add before I go on to this other part is with the um, sea life is an adventure that is exciting and worth living um, rather than a struggle. When my sister was going through her issues and everything, on that day that she passed, well, the day before she passed, I, I, I had to literally, I had to, to not see her life as a struggle. I had to literally take my hands off because I realized with, with me holding on to her and her husband holding on to her, she was holding on because we were holding on. So we literally had to take our hands off of her. And I can remember on the day, and see I'm doing good because I'm not crying, I'm doing good. But I can remember on the day that she, that she passed, that last breath, and I really wanted to share this, I didn't know where I was going to put it at. but. Um, when she took her last breath, it wasn't like something that was really sorrowful right then, but I, I, I saw God in it because when she took her last breath, she took like a really deep breath, and when she let it out, I heard like ripples of water. That's what I heard. And it was almost like the ripples, they started like really, like really loud, but then it went off into a distance. And then it stopped. You know, there was like ripples of water. And, and of course, me always being in the sozo mode, I was like, you know, God, what is this? You know, he's, that's, that's my life breath. Because God breathes into us the breath of life. You know, so when she left here, she breathed that out. And I see that as her breathing 
into me. I, I, that's just the way I saw that her breathing into me because she had so much. She enjoyed life. She just enjoyed life. And she had so much to offer to people. You know, it was just so much that, that, that was in her. But that breath, and it told, that totally just wrecked me too because it, was, it, it just went off like into a distance, the, the, the breath. You know, so, but anyway. Um, so Bill Johnson says, we cannot hold God hostage to our questions. He doesn't owe you an answer. If you want peace that passes understanding, you're going to have to give up your own right to understanding. And that's called trust. You're going to have to trust God with everything. And we trust God, but there comes a time when we really need to trust God, meaning we need to activate that trust that we say we have in him. Activate that trust. Because there's, there's, there's these different levels of this trust, you know. So, and one thing that someone had told me was, I know you trust God, but now you really have to trust him. And I know what they, I know what they mean now. So, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 from the Message Bible says, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out anything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. He's the one who will keep you on track. So we are to trust him from the bottom of our hearts. Then Graham Cook says, oh, Proverbs 3, let me see. Yeah, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 from the Message Bible. Graham Cook says, I want to be joyfully vulnerable to God's goodness. That means, therefore, there is no scope for moaning, whining, or self-doubt, self-pity. My life is centered on my relationship with God, not my problems. Amen. And that's the place that we need to get to. And worry is a misuse of your imagination. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7 from the Voice Bible says, Don't be anxious about things. Instead, pray. Pray about everything. He longs to hear your requests. So talk to God about your needs and be thankful for what has come. And know that the peace of God, a peace that is beyond any and all of our human understanding, will stand watch over your hearts and minds in Jesus, the Anointed One. The world's peace depends on having favorable circumstances. As long as things are going well, we feel peace. When things don't go as planned, we quickly, the peace quickly flees. John 14 and 27 says, I will read it in the other version first. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's John 14, 27. Now in the Message Bible, I really like it like this in the Message Bible. It says, I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. We are well and whole. Yes. Peace. I don't leave you that way that you're used to being left, feeling abandoned or feeling bereaved. So don't be upset. Don't be distraught. So he's leaving us well and whole. When we choose to worry, we cannot live in peace. Worry is the enemy of peace. God invites us to cast all of our cares upon him and then to let them go. God's supernatural peace passes natural understanding. We can't comprehend <laughs> this kind of peace, but we can walk in it. <laughs> you, you can definitely walk in it. Don't, don't try to figure it out. Don't try to reason it out. Just receive it. Walk in it. That's what you have to do. So we're to dance as though no one is watching us. We're to love, though you have, may have been hurt before. You can sing as though no one can hear you. 
And you can choose to live as though heaven is here on earth now. That's what I choose to do. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to read over you, not the blessing right now. <laughs> I'm going to read over you a prophecy that was spoken to, over me in uh, March 13, 2009. And I want you guys to grab hold of this. Um, because I believe this is, this is, this is where we're going. Um, so just, just listen and find yourself in it, in here somewhere. Okay, it says, there are those that others would have quit on, but you didn't quit. You kept going. You didn't know that. But there they were. They have had backgrounds where they have been abused, where they suffered, where people held them down. But you believed in them and caused them to rise up. I take joy in that, says God. I'm going to increase the anointing for you to touch more, watch and see. I'll open up their ears. More and more are going to sit at your feet, want to hear your counsel, want to hear you speak to them. More and more will come out of it, and they're going to break the bondages. In the midst of your counsels of the past, your heart broke and cried out, why can't I get them free? You cried out to such an extent, wanting more of me, that I promised you at the time that I would give it. The day is coming that you will break through and they will not remain in their bondage. They will not remain broken. I am going to increase the authority on your life where they will not only break free, they're going to walk strong in me. It's a new stage of life for you and now they're going to rise up. You will yank them and say, come on, this is the direction God is speaking. I also give you a word to the church that you have known this is where God is taking her, and your heart leaps inside, and because of that, you have clarity of thought to speak to my church. I will put you before my people to say it very clearly, and I will open up your mouth in the midst of it, and it will come out as a clarion call, very clear. They will know it's God. Now tell them the direction they're to go. There is a sound that I will yet release from you, a sound, that, a sound that's come to my people. Woman of God, yet it shall be released. You shall be that vessel. Lay your hands on them and heal them. Don't back down for believing for me, for those who are crushed, as you will raise them up in Jesus' name. This is who you are. This is my heart in you. And I've put it in you at a time that, I've carried, that you've carried many things. Watch and see. You're on the other side, and you have stepped into that anointing in Jesus' name. And one of, one of the things that God had told me was that I would carry my sister for a while, but then greater levels of joy. That's what he said. So, of course, I asked him, how long is that going to be? <laughs> We're not going to get into all that. <laughs> but um, so there are times that we carry things, that we carry things, and those, we carry those things for a purpose. So, so don't always think, okay, you know, God's just picking on me. You know, I'm, I'm going through this, going through that. But we, whatever we go through, it's always for someone else. Yes. It's, not, it's, it's not always about us. It's for someone else. So, so go through that thing graciously because on the other side of that is somebody's freedom. But if we give up, yes. you know, it's someone's freedom attached to that. It's someone's breakthrough attached to what you're going through. So we need to just go through it graciously. God's with you. He's got you. He's carrying you. You're trusting him. He's on the other side. So, um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to actually um, do communion because I have a blessing to speak over you guys that I wrote. So we're going to actually take communion, and then I'm going to speak the blessing over while communion is going on.
Just do it now. blessing. I bless you with an anointing for taking the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ to those who do not know it as an overflow of your life. When you walk in this place, the peace of those around you will increase. You can be known as someone who carries the peace of God. I bless you with a river of peace flowing out from your spirit and washing over those around you. Walk with the anointing of his presence so that peace flows from you to those around you who do not know your God. I bless your spirit with being large enough to embrace the will of God and the presence of God. Be a river that flows out from the throne of God that gives life to others. And as we were in worship, I did see like Jesus walking through the sanctuary up here. And you know the scriptures out that his robe filled the temple, but and it just kind of spread out all the way this way. So the Spirit of God is here. We just need to enjoy it. Just enjoy his presence right now. As you take partake of communion, just enjoy his presence, enjoy his spirit, just enjoy what his body represents what the blood represents in your life. Just find him in the place where, where he's waiting for you. Just find him in that place as you partake of the communion on today. Thank you, Father, for the rich word. Such a rich word, rich word from our sister. So many volumes of revelation and peace and authority and authority. We thank the Father for that. We're going to ask the ministry team to come up, to come up. 
those who want um, specific prayer, um, we're going to agree with you. We're going to speak life over you. Um, Lori, come up. Dean, come up. Um, if you want a special impartation of peace, Jenny, Virginia, is going to impart that into you. And if you want to just receive it at your seats, that's fine. Because the Holy Spirit is here in this fullness. Thank you for the word.